and welcome to IB Physics Help Podcast. My name is Horatiu Pop and I'm currently teaching physics in a school in Warsaw, Poland. These video presentations are designed to provide my students with an additional revision resource. However, I hope anyone studying physics in high school will find them useful. If you want to find out more about this podcast, please visit www.ibphysicshelp.net. Today's topic is physical quantities. What is a physical quantity? What is a scalar or a vector? What is the difference between them? All these in today's podcast. One of the main goals in physics is to describe the world around us. Objects, processes, phenomena and so on. If you want to describe, let's say, a car, you would probably start by indicating some of its characteristics or properties. Make color, size, maximum speed, and so on. In other words, describing an object or a phenomenon means indicating its properties. However, notions like small, large, heavy or hot are quite relative and sometimes ambiguous or subjective. In science, it is important that we are able to communicate in a clear and precise manner. Therefore, in general, for each property, we define a physical quantity. A physical quantity must provide clear and unambiguous information about the property it describes. The measurement or description of any physical quantity is made relative to a particular standard or unit. Let's consider a few simple examples I'm sure you are familiar with. If we want to describe the quantity of matter of a body, we define a physical quantity called mass, measured in kilograms. To describe the amount of space that an object occupies, we use a physical quantity called volume, measured in cubic meters. In order to describe how fast a body moves, we use a physical quantity called speed, its unit, meter per second. One last example. We describe the strength and direction of a push or a pull using a physical quantity called force. It is measured in newtons. A common mistake some students make is to confuse a physical quantity with its unit. Let's have a look at the example shown on the screen to make sure that we use the correct terminology. Force F equals 8 newtons. Force is the physical quantity. F is a symbol for the physical quantity. 8 is the numerical value and N is the symbol for the unit. Let's take two other examples. Mass M equals 5 kilograms, speed V equals 2 meters per second. Although occasionally we use the same letters for different quantities or units, it should be quite clear from the context which one we are referring to. In our first example, M is the symbol for mass, a physical quantity, whereas in the second example, M stands for meters, which is the unit. A quick side note, the first letter of a physical quantity is not always the symbol we use for that quantity. Let's return for a moment to units. Sometimes people have experienced difficulties in communicating information about physical quantities due to the variety of units used. We could quickly think of one such example, expressing length in inches and centimeters. To make the things a little less complicated, an international system of units, SI for short, was adopted. There are seven base or fundamental units. Length, mass, time, electric current, thermodynamic temperature, amount of substance, luminous intensity. All other units are called derived units and can be expressed using the seven base units. Now we can move on and discuss about the two different types of physical quantities, scalars and vectors. In the next few minutes I'll try to give you a reason why we need to define two different types of physical quantities. 
Let's consider the following scenario. You are standing in front of a table that has a box on it. Your friend instructs you to push that box with a force of 45 newtons. Let's assume for now that you have a way of measuring the strength of your push. There are several ways in which you may choose to push on that box. Vertically downwards, horizontally to the right, downwards under an angle of 80 degrees, and so on. The effects of your action on the box depend on the direction in which you push. Direction is the key word here. In order to give clear and unequivocal information about a force, you have to indicate its strength, also called magnitude, and its direction. When your friend instructs you to push the box with a magnitude of 45 newtons horizontally to the left, it is clear to you and everybody else what he means by that. There is only one way you can push that box. We really need an indication of the direction of the force in order to have it properly defined. A vector quantity is a physical quantity with magnitude and direction. Force is an example of such a quantity. On the other hand, a scalar is a quantity that can be completely described by a magnitude or size. Some examples of scalars, mass, temperature, time, speed. In practice, it's important to be able to identify what type of physical quantity you are dealing with. The way you add or multiply vectors is different than the way in which the same operations are performed when you deal with scalars. Let me give you a simple example. If you have a bag that contains 1 kilogram of apples and you add 2 kilograms of apples, you will for sure end up with 3 kilograms of apples in your bag. However, if let's say two students are pulling on a box, one with a 20 newtons and the other with a 30 newton force, the combined effect of the two forces, also called the resultant force, is not necessarily equivalent with one 50 newtons force. In fact, the net effect of the two forces could be anywhere between 10 newtons and 50 newtons, depending on the direction of the two. Therefore, the vector sum of a 20 newton force and a 30 newton force is not automatically 50 newtons. We need to take into account the direction of each of the two forces involved. There are several methods of adding, subtracting or multiplying vectors. More on this topic in the next podcast. Let's quickly go through the points we've covered today. In order to describe the properties of objects, processes or phenomena, we define physical quantities. For each physical quantity, we define a unit. There are two different types of physical quantities. Scalars, defined simply by their size, and vectors, defined by their size and their direction. In each podcast, I intend to present a website a book or a piece of software you might find useful in your work in physics. Here is today's speak. Graph is an open source application used to draw, well, mathematical graphs. In physics, it can be used to plot graphs of experimental results, find trend lines, gradients, calculate areas under the graph, and so on. It offers the option of inserting error bars for data points. Very useful when writing lab reports. That's all for now. I hope you found this useful. If you have any suggestions or comments, please write me at ibphysicshelp at gmail.com. Thank you and see you soon.